You are listening to Claret and Blue, an Aston Villa podcast brought to you by Birmingham Live. Hello, my name is Dan Rowlandson. I'm joined by Ashley Priest. Lovely photo you've got there on the intro of that, Ash. When was that taken? Good deal. Um, before lockdown, before all this nonsense. Yeah. That was when I first started, so just before I went out to Minnesota last summer. Wow, long yeah. time ago. Pre-baby and everything that was, so uh, yeah, you, fresh face and yeah. Do you reckon there's a few more grey hairs in that in that head of hair you've got now after the baby? 100%, yeah. <laughs> well, this is Ask Ash Anything. I've already asked you two questions about your hair. Uh, <laughs> this is your opportunity to ask Ash anything you want about Aston Villa, uh, what's going on in the world of all things claret and blue. So do get involved in the comments section. There's a few things that we want to cover and talk about regardless of any questions, just in case no one's watching. <laughs> so we'll start with West Ham, shall we, I guess, the, yeah, the upcoming on. game. It feels like even though we only played last Saturday, I don't know whether this is just because, because I've had a busy week, it feels like a long time since Villa last played a football game and we, obviously we don't play till Monday after everybody else. Do you feel the same way or, or do, am I just tired after a long week? I bet, I bet Dean Smith's buzzing really because Villa were hit hard, weren't they, against Brighton. The uh, the fatigue factor I mentioned because they had a lot of international players on duty, didn't they? Yeah. Players flying from South America, uh, Africa. That's old for me. Brighton didn't have a single player on international duty in their eleven, so that was that was a, um, a key factor. I keep saying the word factor, X factor. Um, but uh, yeah, so Dean Smith will be pleased he's had, he's had the group for a, a longer period this week. He, he mentioned preparing for Brighton like a microwave job or something. He said it's just how, how, they, how, how little time they had together. So yeah, much more welcome. Obviously, the news: Ross Barkley's out, so massive loss for Villa there. With a hamstring injury, uh, Dean Smith's press conference is tomorrow, Saturday morning, so I'll be providing updates from that and just see how bad that hamstring injury is. But looking to Monday, I think, like I said, more of a rest for Villa's players and they're unbeaten away from home, Dan. They haven't conceded a goal away from home. That's true. And they, they look more, they look, they look a different team, they look a much more dangerous team. Okay, they've had Ross Barkley in the, in, in, against Arsenal previously and whatnot, but yeah, like the shackles are off and home teams against Villa they, they, they tend to come out and Villa do them on the break so uh, yeah as well L- London Stadium plenty of happy memories there from last season as well so I'm look, I'm look, I'm confident for it I think Villa can do a job there big pitch and get Greenwich involved and um, yeah Watkins did you a goal as well so yeah. I'm optimistic going into that one for sure yeah, already sitting here and talking about Villa is getting me fired up Come and ready and, and in the mood for the game because it's been, like I said at the start, it's been a long week. Just before we came on air, I spilled half a cup of tea everywhere all over my desk, all over oh, my what? laptop. Look at this soggy, soggy tissue to prove it actually happened. Uh, soggy tissue, <laughs> It is tea, mate, I can confirm. Um, I'm just not, not in a great mood. Um, but yeah, talking about Villa, it's nice to have a distraction. Uh, football is back. I'm glad the internationals are out of the way. Even after we've lost the last game, it's still, it's still nice, isn't it, to, to have Villa back in in our lives again um talking about Barclays, there's a first comment from phil curley who says troy has to start as 10 with jack on the left when jack floats bertram must cover him what are your thoughts there because i, I think that troy is too one-footed to play centrally i've just seen a training ground video villa put out on villa tv if you want to have a watch it's got Grealish in the hole a lot um throughout that Look into that however you want to, but he's, he's getting balls in in the central area, and he's setting the wingers up, and he's taking shots from, from twenty yards out, which could be a bit bit, bit of a hint in the way Dean Smith wants to go on Monday. I mean, Jack Grealish is a number ten. Yeah, I think everyone knows where Jack Grealish's best position is. That's that's in the inside left forward position where he's um, done his damage for a long time now. So long may that continue. Gets more room out wide, doesn't he? For me, um, mm. he can get quite congested in the middle. You'll have um, Suchek and Royce in the, in, in, in the uh, middle of the park on uh, Monday, which two big lads. Will, Will Smith want to get him out of there and get him get him one-on-one out wide, um, cutting in. So, yeah, big decisions to be made. Another one is Conor Hurahan. Does he come, come in? And does Dean Smith go with the same 11 that started against Fulham pre-Barkley? Mm-hmm. Uh, a little great against Fulham. And Conor Hurahan was at, was at the... Um, he scored and got an assist down there. So he hasn't played played football since Connor. So apart from coming on last week, so decisions to be made. Smith will make the call when he on Monday. Be interested to see what he does. Um, does he go go for it more? Be playing Bertrand Traore or will he play Connor? 
So, yeah, two players there who are vying for Barkley's position and where will Jack Grealish play? So, yeah, we'll see. I think I'd rather have... Jack back in the middle and push Traor yeah. out on on the on the wing. I thought I thought mm-hmm. Traor got a mixed reception. I thought on social media after the game, I thought he was pretty good. I don't think he I was. was right. I don't think he, yeah. But the, there's a few comments to say that I oh, he, he wasn't anything spectacular. I, I agree that he wasn't amazing, but there's a few people that was like oh, it was a bit bit underwhelming. I thought yeah. he was a, a middling ground performance that he did some good moments and some some not good, so good moments, which is which is fine. I just think because he always wants to prioritise his left foot, having him play centrally, you know, he's always going to want to try and go one way. Whereas if he's on the right wing, he's he's only got limited pitch space anyway. Yeah, um, there's an interesting. Uh, thought from Tom here, who says, "Would you give Ramsey a chance with that with Barkley now missing? Now you just mentioned Troy and Harahan. It's probably going to be one of those two that changes the system. Oh, yeah. But Jacob Ramsey is on the periphery of the squad, and, and, and maybe he does get some minutes. He probably moved up the pecking order. Might see him on the bench, perhaps. But I can't mm. see him coming straight into a starting eleven in the Premier League. Um, he's so well liked, Jacob, at Bodymore by the coaches and first team players. He's, he travels to every game with the first team, even if he's not in there." Match day 18, so that tells a lot. Smith Logs having him around, feeding off the logs of Jack and Ross and McGinn, just just to have him around and bed, bed him into the first team group because he's going to be a big player for Villa in the future future season. So with Ramsey's uh, first team chances, I see him going out on a loan in January. We look to get some minutes over the festive period. I think Villa have got eight games now in 30 days, so it'd yeah. be pretty busy. So yeah, Ramsey, I think he'll go out on loan in January, get some minutes, play week in week out. And come back um, next summer, but he, he, he just takes an injury or two for him to, to um, get a chance in the Premier League. So he's there, he's well liked, and I think a, a, a place for him on the bench on uh, Monday could be forthcoming for him. So yeah, really like Ramsey, um, done well this season in the cup games, and yeah, the big future at Villa Park. What level do you think he'll be sent out on loan to? Championship, got to be Championship. Um, yeah, it's got to be because he played League One football last season at Doncaster. Seven games, scored three goals, six were, six, six were starts as well. So he really excelled in League One under Darren Moore and um, seen so taking that little st- step up now to the Championship, mid table Championship club, looking for a bit of injection of youth in the midfield. And I think Ramsey's, Ramsey's your boy, and they'll have, they'll have clubs queuing up for him. Um, Smith didn't want to let him go um, in the summer. He wait, waited for an 11th hour call regarding that. He was going to send him out. And he decided not to keep him around the group and train him day in day out with your Grealishes and your Barclays and McGinns and your Douglas Louises. It's going to bring your game up, even if you're not playing uh, playing uh, first team football. So, yeah, I think a five month loan in January for Ramsey would be uh, best for both parties there. And like I've said, massive future at the football club. He signed a new long term deal last January, and he's going to be one that's going to be around the group. But yeah, from here on in. So. Yeah, I don't see him coming into the Premier League fold straight away. I mean, that's Ramsey's situation. He looked for some minutes from off the bench, like he did against Fulham. But yeah, can't speak highly enough of him and and how, how highly uh, Smith and Co rate him. So yeah, one for the future though. Uh, Holly asks, uh, what's the prognosis on Barkley? I know he went off with a hamstring difficulty. Do we know the actual length of that injury yet, or is this something you'll seek further cl- clarification from from Smith tomorrow? Yeah, Smith tomorrow. Clarification on that. He's had two really bad hamstring injuries. Uh, 2017, 2018. I've just looked into it. He's out for 100 plus days, so hopefully it's nothing wow. on that severity. Yeah, he's, he's stuffed with hamstring injury before, back to back ones as well. But uh, yeah, we'll find out tomorrow. See how long he's out for. Villa play on Monday against West Ham, and then they play Friday against Newcastle. So short turnaround. I can't see him being risked for Newcastle next week. So perhaps the Wolves game after that, we'll see him back in. Uh, so yeah, couple. I think a couple of games out. Initially, and we'll see what Dean Smith says tomorrow. So, yeah. Uh, Holly also asked, isn't it my birthday? It was actually yesterday, my birthday. But um, uh, yeah, thanks. I also, speaking of X Factor at the start of this, my sister told me uh, if I was on X Factor, I'd now be in the over 25s category this year for the first time. I was ouch. Like, thanks for that. <laughs> I mean, what's that supposed to do for my, my confidence? But yeah, 25 yesterday. Um, thank you for the belated well wishes. But yeah, it was yesterday. Um, Questions, if you've got any questions, someone just says I love the podcast. We're going to go plug to the Andy Vyman podcast uh, shortly, so stay tuned for that. That came out earlier today. If you've got a question for Ash, though, uh, do send them in. 
perfect timing one here is there a possibility of Nakamba leaving permanently in January what do you think about Nakamba he's he's played games where I thought you know what he's a decent player in there and he's also played games where I thought well oh, actually I don't think he's cut out for Premier League level mm, interesting one isn't it Nakamba yeah he's beyond Douglas Louise in the pecking order and I can't see that changing to be honest unless injuries suffice so yeah, he's more of a ball winner, defensively minded player, which Villa relied on last season when Nakamba came in. Uh, he was in and out of the team, wasn't he? But this season, Villa are going on the front foot, aren't they, and attacking teams and looking menacing when they're doing so. And yeah, I think John McGinn's role has changed as well. So that that's pushed Nakamba down another another in the pecking order again because yeah. McGinn's a bit more defensively minded this year as well. Mm-hmm. So another left footed player as well, but. Yeah, the can believe in January. Possibly, possibly wants first team assurances. Wants to play football. Apart, possibly alone could um, could happen depending on Villa situation in January, whether injuries happen or suspensions or you don't know, do you? Because remember this time last season, uh, Mings was out for four games after a hamstring injury. Then John McGinn broke his ankle and all hell broke loose, didn't it? And Wensley Heating going down and anything can happen. So. Yeah, it will stay around for over the festive period for sure, and we'll see. We'll, that that'll be um, discussed in January, I guess. As soon as you just mentioned uh, Wesley and Heat, and what's the latest on those two? I've seen a few clips of uh, Wesley running around on on a, on the pitches yeah. at Bodymore. Heaton's obviously played a couple of under twenty threes games. I spoke to our colleague Pete Smith the other day at Stoke City because they're in need of an emergency goalkeeper, and I just thought, oh, yeah. I don't think Heaton's ready for <laughs> Championship football. But it'd be nicer to send him out for a couple of games. But he told me that um, Premier League goalkeepers can't move to the Championship for for emergency loans, apparently. So that oh. would be one that could could happen anyway. But it's yeah. nice to see them two making a recovery, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah, he's played his first ninety minutes on Monday, just gone against Stoke, as you say. And uh, yeah, he'd be buzzing with that. Happy to be out there and complete a full match in almost eleven months. So yeah. Heaton's on his well on his way back. Couple couple more twenty threes games, I reckon, under his belt, and uh, it'll be good to go and push Martinez all the way. So yeah, I, th- I think Heaton will probably come into the match day eighteen. I think Steele will probably drop down in regards to pecking orders and. I think, uh, we should see what um, obviously Callinch is still around as well. He's fourth fourth choice keeper now. So, what will happen in January with him with the Euro- European Championships com- Championships coming up? Um, so yeah, Heaton will be looking to push Martinez. Like I say, you're an injury away from a disaster as far as the goalkeeping um, department is concerned. So Heaton, yeah, he'll stick around for sure. Regarding Wesley, yeah, back on the grass, great to see him sprinting again, back with the ball mm-hmm. and. Uh, yeah, I don't think Villa are rushing back though. His, his, his ligament injury was, was so severe, way way worse than uh, Heaton. So I'm, I'm looking at probably a March date for that for him to return to Premier League action. He's going to leave. He's going to need minutes, probably for the 23s perhaps, and, and ease his way back. So I'd say a March is probably a return date for him. I think Watkins will start every game now, regardless of form. I think Villa have. Banking on him, he's scored sixty eight, which is which is a great return, isn't it? So yeah. I can't see that changing. And yeah, I think Keenan Davis is back back in training this week after a little ankle knock, which kept him out of last week's game at Brighton. So he'll be um, yeah second in command as far as strike is concerned. So yeah, we'll see we'll see Wesley in the new year and hopefully Heaton on the bench in the near, near future. Also, on Wesley, when you mentioned under twenty threes, I think that'd be good for his confidence as well because he struggled, yeah. didn't he, at times for last season, being in the struggling side. Like you said, he's not going to come in and, and get Ollie Watkins straight out of the team anyway. Get some minutes with the under twenty threes, bang in a few goals, and it's, it's it. guys as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so that, that'd be the plan for him, I guess. Um, there's a question here from Phil. I'm going to split into two sections. Uh, first yep. of all, he says Villa need to be proactive in January. First of all, I'm going to argue that point. Second of all, he says Deli Ali on loan. Is that a, a realistic option? Someone like Deli Ali? We didn't speak about it before, didn't we? But yeah. a day later, we saw him Barkley, didn't we? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. yeah. Um, yeah, I can't see that happening with Barkley at the club now. Um, yeah, Villa got their marquee signing to play in that 10 role, and Barkley's going to be the man for from here now until May. And perhaps conversation will happen in January whether to sign Barkley or not, yeah. given his form to date. So, I'll be looking at a deal to do, do there. Still only 26 Barkley, so I can't see Ali. Ali won't. That won't be a conversation having about Deli Ali at all. Um, what do you think about being that? proactive in January? Though? Is that something that Villa need to do? do? Do Villa need to go out and say, "Here's, you know, twenty million on this player, thirty million on that player," or is it just a case of seeing if we need to make replacements? I, I've always said, and I've, I'm at risk of repeating myself now. January is not for 
big changes to the squad is it if you're going to go and spend 30 million on a player that's a summer move rather than a January one unless you're doing it to replace someone who, who's got injured yeah uh, Dean Smith mentioned the, the upcoming tra- transfer window and he said always always planning for the next one so I think sporting dollar to Johan Langer he's doing doing just that um, we do have some com- contracts expiring don't they Neil Taylor hmm. Al Mohamedy um, Landry still at the club so conversations to pay him up perhaps continuing um yeah, conversation I have all the time. You, you can't you can't sit still, especially in the Premier League. So I think I've mentioned this to death. Thought with Neil Taylor going, Villa need a new left back for me to rival target and push target on. Yeah. Um, what's the Gilbert situation saying? He, he, he was in his, he spoke recently about being third choice now. Will, will he be moved at the pecking order? Will, I think you'd need a centre back next summer as well, personally. Yeah, you, you, well, Mings and Conte are going to be the way forward. You got Bjorn. Bjorn Engels, he hasn't played a single minute since um, that, that 4 0 Leicester defeat in March, which is a long time ago now. Coming up to a year, near, near enough. Um, so, would he want insurances on him? It's just about where, where the squad's at. Are people not playing? Are they happy? Um, Courtney Horse, he's back in training now. He's Mings' his, um, replacement if, if injuries happen. His contract's up until 2022, so he's got two years left in his, and Villa have an option on that. But yeah, centre back. Uh, Mo Simmer came from Strasbourg, as we mentioned. Young, I think, 20 year old French centre back. I think that's something they'll, they'll go down the line. Profile wise, young, young centre back coming in the club. Um, yeah, possibly to push on. So, like you say, you can't sit back in the. Um, we've always got a plan for the future. And that's what Langu, the sporting director, will be doing. Langu will be doing. Um, trying to think about any other positions that need. Need attention. You have got the Douglas Lewis buyback option that's lingering. What's happening with that? That expires next summer. Douglas Lewis is a massive part of Villa go, go moving forward. Um, yeah. And yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Al Ghazi's not playing at the minute. What happens for him? There's loads of questions, loads of answers, loads of questions need answering. Sorry, um, it's all on squad morale, and I think it's, it is a happy camp at the moment. But how long will that last? Yeah. I think it probably you get a little bit more goodwill from the management team if the team are doing well. I don't think somebody yeah. like El Ghazi or Harahan can come to, knocking on Dean Smith's door and say, come on, boss, put exactly me in that. there when we're you know, sixth in the league. Um, talking about kind of surprise departures, and I don't mean surprise in the sense that we'd be surprised to see them go, but somebody like Harahan or El Ghazi, because you, you think of people we need to move on, Lansbury, Neil Taylor, Gilbert, people like that that you think, yeah, they're going to go at some point. People like Harahan and El Ghazi were very much involved up until this season, basically. Is there any chance that they kind of rock up to Dean Smith and say, look, I, I need to get football elsewhere. I, I'm looking to progress my career on because someone like, like you mentioned, Henry Lansbury has been around the place for what seems like forever now, and he's happy to run out his contract, seemingly. Where somebody like Harahan, I imagine, is the kind of character that thinks, you know, what I'm a good enough footballer to go and play uh, every game somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, it's a conversation that we had. I don't think the uh, the boat's going to be wrapped too much now. Like you say, we're really doing so well. Mood in the camp's great. We've won five out of eight. Happy days and. The long, longer it goes without playing football, um, just players want to play football, simple. It's, yeah. it's not rocket science. So it depends what they want to do, what, what are their motives. It's a short career as it is, you know what I mean? It's a, what is it, 15-year career? 12, 13 years. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, if that, so it all depends on them, what, what they want to do. If they want to play week in, week out, or they're happy to bide their time. Um, and wait for the chance, which Hurrahan did really well last season, coming to his own in Project Restart. He had another disappointment coming out for Barclay this time around. So, yeah, I like, I like, I like Hurrahan's mentality as well. Whenever he comes back in, he always looks to try and prove a point. So, I love, love, love players with that attitude. And, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what else to say about that. <laughs> Going back to what I just said about Lansbury, kind of happy to see out his contract. I'm kind of forgetting what the financial situation looks like in the in the in the in the world here, where he's probably not going to get another contract as big as the one he's got at Villa. We're in a difficult. I mean, obviously he's got more money than than most people have, but he's just still in a position where he probably won't earn that money elsewhere. So if he can get another year out of that, whilst the world is still a mess, then you can't knock that, can you? He's looking after his family at the end of the day, exactly. as much as that's yeah. frustrating. And you think, oh well, don't you want to go and play football? It's a good deal, isn't it? So I'm not going to sit here and go boo Henry Lansbury because everyone's looking after their own their own, exactly their own personal yeah. life anyway. So. Spot on. 
it is what it is. It's not my money playing Henry, Henry Lands whistle ultimately. I don't really care, to be honest. Um, there's a few comments coming in about the Deli Alley situation, saying that surely if we're playing a 4 2 3 1, you've got Barkley, Jack Grealish, and Deli Alley as kind of a triple threat behind Ollie Watkins. That does sound appealing, but surely I, I don't see. I mean, we are decent in the Premier League now. I'm still picturing Villa as being down the bottom of the table, but I don't see Deli Alley leaving Spurs and being this next, you know, wonder kid to come through the ranks, England superstar, etc., mm. to go to Villa. I still, I'd see him going to a Chelsea or a, a Man United or somebody like that. I think, I think he's in, isn't he? He's in a WhatsApp group with Grealish. I think. Is like it? A celebration. Remember that? They're oh, all in the yeah, WhatsApp yeah, group. Yeah. Maddie Stern, Alan Chilwell. They're all in like a WhatsApp group. So maybe Grealish had a word of him, like he did with Barkley, but. <laughs> I can't see that happening. To be fair, Barkley, Ali, and Grealish beyond the. I mean, beyond that, would be, that does sound exciting. It sounds scary. very attacking. <laughs> but uh, nah, I can't see myself. Perhaps. I mean, not, is he going to want to leave Spurs? I know he's not getting much action. No, no. Perhaps, uh, perhaps in January. I don't know. Yeah, I just don't see it. Um, there's a couple of other points I wanted to raise. We're only here for a short one today because it's a it's busy Friday afternoon. Um, where was it? Uh, where do Villa need to finish this season for Jack Grealish to stay? That's a very interesting comment there from John that probably raises yeah. a, a fair bit of debate. Because um, we kept saying, didn't we? Well, if Jack wants to stay and progress his career with Villa, Villa have to go on to achieve things. We've got to compete for trophies and we've got to get back into Europe. Because if he's going to leave to go and play Europa League with Tottenham, let's say, he could stay at Villa and play in the Europa League if we get there. So what is the target? Would, would Jack Grealish see eighth as progression and think, yeah, I'll give it another year? Do we have to get into Europe this year for him to think I've got to stay? Or, or is it a case of he loves the club so much, even if we finish 15th, he'd still go, well, Villa's my club, I'm not going anywhere? don't know. I mean, Villa have all the power, don't they? That five-year contract um, was was a master stroke in early in the summer, really mm. signing that. But yeah, I mean, DSP has mentioned Europe, so to have the owners. They've got to be knocking on the European door, top six door, in the not-too-distant future. So... Survived by a single point last season. They've got to show a marked improvement on that this, this season, given the start they've had and the players they've signed and how they've jowled in straight away seamlessly. So, back to the question. I think Villa have got to be knocking on the top 10, top half um, top half of the table and looking to push on in Europe and competing in the, in, in the FA Cup and stuff like that and showing purpose. And I think Grealish is behind that project. He mentioned, kept mentioning the project. He was sold by the owners, and the owners aren't here to mess around either. They've got yeah. lofty ambitions for the club. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a big improvement this year, uh, given the way they've started. They won five out of eight, which is a brilliant start. Okay, they've lost back-to-back home games at home. But, yeah, I think Villa, Villa will be knocking on the top half door this year, for sure, for me. Um, they've, got to be, they've got to show signs that they're taking it onto a new, new level. And they're not, they're not sitting back and just taking a 14th place finish and saying, yeah, that was better than last year. They ain't going to do that. They're going to have, they're going to have a bit more purpose this year and, and, and just, just keep aiming as high as possible. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I can't, I don't know what the I can't see an issue being there. Do you know what I mean? There's a good point here for Mary who says, Jack is the only one who knows the answer to that question. Everyone else is just giving their opinion. Which Spot exactly on. we don't know what's in Jack's head. He might be thinking, even if we're to get top four, I still want to leave to go to somebody else. So there's no point guessing, is there? For now, Jack Grealish is still an Aston Villa player, Aston Villa captain on a five year deal. Enjoy him while we can. Hopefully we get to see him at some point in person. Um, we'll go on to that to end the new government tier three, tier two announcements came out, I think, yesterday. Uh, Birmingham's still in tier three, unfortunately, and obviously that means things for different health reasons, and that's more important than than football. But is it fair that some teams can now have their fans back in the Premier League, even if it is only two thousand? Villa could go and play away at Chelsea, for example. I think that's the first game that we play against uh, fans, playing against fans. That'd be interesting <laughs> playing in yeah. a stadium with fans. Um, is that fair that Chelsea get two thousand fans to support them, whereas Villa don't get anybody at Villa Park? For me, I don't think it's an issue. For me, two two thousand going to make a massive difference. Forty thousand, okay, fair enough. And Villa wilted at times last season, especially with their wretched away record playing in front of like, home, home fans. Like so, no, not an issue for me. Two thousand fans in a 40,000 40, seat stadium. It's not going to make an issue at all. I still, I still suppose two thousand singing is better than zero, though, isn't it? Depends how it sounds. I ain't been, I ain't been to these like non-league grounds. I don't know how it sounds. You know what I mean, there's talk of Villa having. If, if Villa did make tier two, they'd have the lower halt 
for 2,000 in there. So I don't know how it looked, to be fair. I know the whole thing holds about 13,000, doesn't it? So... Mm. Well, they'll all be spread out, won't they? So it's not it's not going to be exactly. football as we know it. It's not going to be a tightly dense knit of you know ultras with their flags and everything. Exactly. It's going to be that, spread about exactly. with face masks. I don't even think you can sit with people in your own family. I mean, I'm not going to get into the government rules because this is not the platform for that. Um, but yeah, it is. It does seem like it should either be everyone is on the, in the same boat or 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 not at all. Which I know that, yeah. that you know, I think it's is it pretty much half of the teams can have it. You know, yeah, exactly. A few exactly. teams in London, a few teams in Liverpool. Um, Brighton, Southampton. Yeah, so it's almost like half the league is fine and half the league isn't. So does then yes. that kind of bring into is that is it a fair competition then? Do, would the fans have that saying. much of an impact that Liverpool can go and get two thousand to rile them up, whereas Villa can't? Does that then make it a fair, a fair equal game? Like you it said, should, does, does two thousand make a difference? Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't know. Like you said, it's, it almost feels like it should be all or nothing, and whether that's yeah. all the Premier League sides or none of them, or a full stadium or nobody, two thousand, yeah. four thousand, six thousand, whatever. But then the flip side of that, part of me thinks, well, if I was picked as one of those two thousand to go, I'd be buzzing with that. I'd definitely be straight there. So mm. I kind of want to get back to Villa Park as, safe, as soon as possible, but also it needs to be safe for everyone as well and it's not going to be the same experience as it was before anyway so no weird. It's, a, it's a weird one and i'll just <laughs> i wish i could just clip my fingers and go back to life <laughs> before before Sorry. coronavirus but obviously this is the new world now the new future and uh fingers crossed i mean we're getting way into way more into coronavirus than i thought but get that vaccine and we can all get back to villa park safely and soundly together Forty thousand in there and, and like i said before see villa lift that premier league trophy <laughs> um, but yeah we'll call it a day there mate thanks everyone who tuned in on this Friday afternoon um, we'll stick this out as a podcast as well as a little preview for the West Ham game uh, we'll try and do these Q&A's maybe once a week once every two weeks it's a busy fixture list isn't it coming up so I'm not going to promise that we're going to do this every single week we released a podcast with Andy Vyman this morning I'm going to play you a short clip now for the Facebook live audience to give a, a little tease for that obviously I think the one for most fans will probably see as well was the win against Man City when there's a picture of me in front of the whole end celebrating. I'll never forget that. I think it's probably one of the most iconic Villa pictures of recent years. Obviously, I've seen the yeah, Joe Hart came out and I just tried to flick it past him and then tap it in the net. But obviously, I got a bigger touch on it than I thought I would. There's that picture and then like I turned around and there's no one there because I was obviously so far ahead of everyone. And then to kind of turn back to the crowd and then it took a few seconds for everyone to like, to, to come come to me to celebrate but yeah that was a that was a great day in that picture as well it, what's so good about it I think you can see the expressions in all the fans you see how much it means to them and when you stand there and look at the crowd and you see about I don't know how many fit in the whole end like 3,000 4,000 people right in front of you and you see them all going crazy I think there's no there's no better feeling in the world 3,000 in the whole end Andy <laughs> come on nah, great stuff that yeah, good really good. Warmer. Holly used to really fancy him as well, which is fair enough. He's a good looking bloke, to be fair. Uh, he also told us a story about how he met his wife. I'm giving away all the podcasts here. He met his wife in Meet You uh, and told her that he was a painter and decorator. <laughs> and she, <laughs> knows nothing, she knows nothing about football. And because he's, he speaks good English, but obviously it's not his native language. And he, yeah. he worded it as like, she had no idea and she still doesn't. And I heard that as like, she still doesn't know I'm a professional footballer yeah, and not yeah, a painter yeah. and decorator. Um, but yeah, it's really good. And I think her, she's a Brummie girl yeah. and her brother is a Villa fan. And she saw a photo of them together and was like, that's not a painter and decorator, that's Andy Varman playing for Villa. Brilliant. Um, so yeah, really, really good story. He's a really nice guy. And um, just as a little tease for the podcast, uh, we've just recorded one this morning with another ex-player um, who played with Gareth Barry. I'll give you that as a little a little tease. You know who it is, Ash, so don't guess. But for, for the comments and the people Sally, listening... Sally Foo, him. <laughs> oh, mate, you've ruined it. Um, so that'll be out probably middle of December, uh, 10 days or so. Not next week, the week after probably. Uh, but that was a very, very good interview. We sat down with him for an hour and 45 minutes. So loads of stories covered and a really interesting listen. So stay tuned to all our content. We've got a packed Christmas schedule coming up. Plenty of games, plenty of interviews, plenty of nonsense podcasts from us here at the Claret Blue team as well. And uh, we'll catch you again in a few days. Thank you for listening to Claret and Blue, an Aston Villa podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, then please let us know. We love hearing your feedback. We'll be back soon with another episode. Until then, up the villa.